Am I the butthole for not wanting my husband to go to his ex's funeral? I'll admit I'm biased right off the bat. I couldn't stand her. I call her his ex to myself and others. He called her his friend. We're all in our early 40s. She died recently, aneurysm. I've been with him 10 years now, but he'd known her for 20 plus. The way he tells it, they were friends in college, decided to date, got married, then realized they weren't a great couple and decided to just be friends. All that happened years before I met him. He was clear early on that she was important. A couple months into dating, it came up that his friend was actually his ex-wife. He explained the above to me, saying she was one of his closest friends and that it was purely platonic. I expressed some discomfort at him being so close to an ex, and he told me that's fine. If you have a serious issue with it, let me know now and save us some time. I'll choose her. I like you and all, but I've known her for over 12 years and she's one of the most important people in my life. You'll have to be okay with that if you want us to be a thing. When we were engaged I asked again. He gave me this perplexed look asked why would us getting married affect my friendships? I sucked it up went along. I resented every moment of knowing her, especially when we had to be social. She understood some part of him I couldn't. Her husband was friends with mine as well, so it's not like I could use him as an angle. He'd have lunch with the ex, they'd go to their geeky movies, and whatever. The few times I brought it up he said we had this conversation before. You had your chance to back out. She died after they had lunch the other day on the way to her car. He spent a bunch of time crying, but honestly I was relieved. He was working with her husband on funeral planning. I told him you don't think you're going, do you? My argument, summed up, she's dead, so she's not a factor anymore. He doesn't get to use his she's my friend excuse since she doesn't exist anymore. He had his cry for a couple days, he gets to be done with mourning her already. There's no need for him to go to her funeral, since I wouldn't want her at his. He was the angriest I've ever seen him when I told him that, replying that he'll be going no matter how I feel, and that he's willing to burn this to the freaking ground while holding up his wedding band. Besides you, she was the closest friend in my life. Him, her husband my sisters are calling me an insensitive butthole over this, all saying that there was no romantic aspect to their relationship, that I'm heartless. Her husband went so far as calling me a ghoul for how I've reacted. I never felt their relationship was appropriate, and I hid that for years because I wanted to be with my husband. Now that she's gone, I don't feel I should have to hide it anymore, and can speak freely. Am I the butthole for just wanting him to be done with her, and for him to not attend the funeral? You're the butthole. When he divorces you, he probably won't have to explain his friendship with you to the next woman because, seriously, who'd want to stay friends with a woman who had treated you like this? You're the butthole congrats on your impending divorce. If she doesn't exist anymore, why are you still so jealous of her? He can't even leave you for her now, so I think it's time you got past it. You're the butthole. You can speak freely, and he can leave after finding out how heartless you actually are. Fair enough. Am I the butthole for giving my stepdaughter a Snickers bar? I, 25 female, am married to my husband Richard, 42 male. He has two identical twin daughters with his ex-wife who are 9 years old. For the purpose of this post, I'll call them Isabel and Maria. I struggle to tell the girls apart so my husband gave Isabel a pink wristband and Maria a blue one so I could tell them apart. I'm currently 5 months pregnant with our son and one of my biggest cravings is Snickers bars. This is an issue because Maria is allergic to nuts, so I usually eat them in my car, our bedroom or the backyard to avoid contamination. Maria's allergy is quite severe and she knows she isn't supposed to eat anything with nuts in them. On Friday, I was sat in my bedroom going ham on some mini Snickers bars while watching Netflix when one of the twins came in my room. I asked who she was and she said she was Isabel and she asked to come sit by me. I didn't even know she was at home but she told me that her dad dropped her off with the keys and he went back to work which is something he does often without telling me. I checked the wristband to make sure it was Isabel and she had a pink one so I didn't think twice and I let her sit by me. She took a piece of chocolate from me and ate it which to me confirmed I was with Isabel because Maria knows she's not supposed to have Snickers. Turns out I was wrong and the girls had swapped wristbands to play a joke on me and she immediately started experiencing a reaction. Thankfully I had an EpiPen and I drove her to the ER and called my husband. He called their mother who was infuriated and she started yelling at me in the ER waiting area and I ended up having a panic attack. Maria ended up being fine and the girls came clean about wanting to play a prank on me. Maria hasn't had a reaction for the past few years so she's saying she forgot how bad and serious they were. My husband is on my side and he's saying that the Maria is old enough to know she shouldn't be eating any nut products and it's not my fault I thought she was Isabel but their mother is saying that I shouldn't have any nut products in the house that could tempt Maria and since I struggle to tell them apart, the smart thing would have been for me not to allow either of them to have the chocolate. She's now demanding that the girls aren't to be left alone with me and other family members are berating me for being careless. 
I just feel so awful and terrible and I would like an unbiased outside perspective on the situation. Am I the butthole for giving my stepdaughter a Snickers bar? Edit, I'm autistic so I struggle with faces. I am actively trying to memorize their differences. OP, you are not the butthole. Not only did you already attempt to confirm which individual you were giving the candy to, but you were explicitly lied to when you did so. Maria knowingly ingested a nut product under her own volition. She is not a wild animal who can't control herself if you have nuts in the house. Honestly, are they going to keep her on a leash in the grocery store because she might be tempted by the peanut butter? Nine years old is old enough to start managing her own allergy. As a mom of twins and I have the nut allergy I'm going with not the butthole. They are kids but they know better about her allergy. People in my family avoid nuts but also know if they eat them they have to wash and brush their teeth before coming near me, even my six years old twins. Dad should have let you know that he was dropping one off and who it was so you could prepare slash be aware and he needs a better system than rubber bands. I would also work on ways to learn the difference BTWN them BC even identical twins have certain characteristics that make them different. Duh. The kids are nine. They know they are allergic to nuts and should be careful. They took so many steps to be in the wrong it's crazy. Switch bands, lie and she ate the bar, you did not offer it. She should have known better. And it sounds like she's taking it as a lesson learned. The mother is now blaming you because you let her blame you. The kids are not babies. They know better but chose to do this. I acknowledge that they are still young but this does not take away their responsibility in this. If the kids had played this prank at school and had the nuts at school, what would be the consequences? Am I the butthole for getting myself kicked out of Sunday school? I am the drama this week. I, 16 female, got myself kicked out of Sunday school at my stepdad's church this weekend. My mom married Brad earlier this year. He has four kids, 12F, male, 10, male, 9, 7M, that are with him most of the time, and to say their family is religious is like the understatement of all time. The daughter has to wear skirts all the time and can't cut her hair and they're all at church at least three times a week and of like family Bible time and stuff every day. I wouldn't care except that now that my mom and Brad are married they expect me to participate and that's just not my bag. I think it's superstitious misogynistic nonsense and I always leave stuff at their church feeling icky. I tried to get my mom to let me go to my dad's on Sundays to avoid conflict but that's a non-starter so far, so I try to avoid talking about it but Brad is like making it his personal mission to get me saved or something so the subject comes up regularly. I finally put my foot down about not wanting to go to church with them and it turned into a big argument and my mom asked me to just go and keep the peace for the younger kids because it's something we do as a family. So, I go and mostly just read, but I don't lie about why I'm there or my religion if someone asks me a question. It pisses Brad and my mom off but I figure if they don't like it they can let me stay home. The problem is that the Sunday school teacher for my age group is a real piece of work and thinks we're all stupid because we're teenage girls. So he likes to go into a lot of biblical Greek translation stuff to make himself look smart. The only thing is he's almost always totally wrong. My dad sends me to private school and I took two years of ancient Greek, taking Latin now, and I know he's bullcrapping people. So I brought an interlinear New Testament and a Koine Greek dictionary with me this week and when he got started I corrected him. Not mean, but just like wow, that's not what it says here at all, can you explain more? And oh, that's weird because that's not how Brill defines that word. Dude was turning red by the end of it and asked me to stop interrupting, so I just shrugged and said I was trying to learn. He told the pastor and the pastor told Brad that I'm not allowed to come to Sunday school anymore because I'm disrespectful. So Brad and my mom are mad and want me to apologize for derailing class instead of just getting through quietly, but I don't know. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. Evangelicals are annoying. To be honest I think this is the best way to clap back at the bullcrap churches push down people's throats. Good on you for checking their lies. Not the butthole. I wish there were more kids like you. We need more people to push back against people trying to abuse their power. Not the butthole, Brad is way out of line trying to force his religion on you and your mom is also the butthole for trying to coerce you into going to his church to keep the peace. Can you talk to your father about it and ask him to intervene on your behalf? Not the butthole tell your dad that they are forcing you into religious indoctrination, his custody lawyer will have a field day. Am I the butthole for mocking a homophobic guy at work, and maybe taking it too far? I work in a male-dominated workplace, and I'm a lesbian. I'm a pretty frickin' obvious lesbian too, like not to be a stereotype but I work a trade job, have buzzed hair, lift, fish and camp, and like working on cars. My nails are short as hell and I wear my keys and multi-tools on a belt carabiner. And I'm out at work, like it's no secret. Now, in a normal workplace I'm sure the advice here would be to go to HR about the kind of crap I'm about to describe. But I'm just getting this out of the way first, my job's got no HR, and if you think management is gonna do anything about sexism and homophobia? They're the ones doing the worst of it. 
I've had more luck asking the guys on my level to go tell the management to cut their bigoted crap out than vice versa honestly. I'm so lucky to have a great team that treats me like one of the crew and has my back. Like these guys will talk crap if I do some dumb crap, but they'll never talk crap about my sexuality or me being a girl. It's not the same across the whole job though, there are some people who are genuinely just really bigoted. I'll call the guy I'm talking about here Robert because that's his name. Yesterday, Robert said that he heard around the shop that I was a, slur for gay person, in front of my co-workers. I decided to have a bit of a laugh at him, and when did you just call me a, slur, what the hell man? I'm straight. Who the frick told you I'm an, even worse slur? A lot of my co-workers were holding back a laugh because they all know I'm 100% gay, and doing a bit. He started getting evasive and didn't tell me anyone's name, so I just started going I'm a Christian. I have a wonderful husband. And it's real fricked up you're making crap up. He started to backtrack, saying all he asked was if I was a lesbian, which wasn't even true. I was like for real man, who even told you I'm, that. And he said Will, another guy who I know is kinda a bigoted old dick. So then I go oh, for frick's sake, of course it was Will. You can't even get caught fricking one guy's mom. Pauses to count on fingers, okay, a guy's mom. Without getting called a fricking lesbian nowadays. At that point most of my co-workers cracked up, and Robert was catching on that it was an elaborate setup for a your mom joke and he got angry asking if I was mocking him. I was like frickin' took you long enough. Like seriously, you should have noticed I was fruity years ago, when I kept coming over your mom's house at night. He stormed off cussing me out and I felt kinda like I had a good laugh but also kinda like I went a little too far. I also don't feel great about making kinda misogynist jokes. It's something that definitely gets me respect at work, if I can crap talk back instead of being a pushover, and if I end up being cruder than anyone else, but it also felt a little icky? Am I the butthole for making fun of a homophobic guy at work? Edited for grammar. Not the butthole. If he wants to dish it out he'd better be able to take it. Not the butthole. You're using the same butthole power that everyone else you work with does, especially your bosses. If they came at you for it, they'd have some major explaining to do for their hypocrisy. Not the butthole. You could have made a scene at the first moment he used a homophobic slur, but you took your time to set up a your mom joke. Respect. Also, enough words and explanations. It's 2022, almost 2023. If people choose to be homophobic today, it's their fault and they deserve the mockery. Not the butthole. Seems like that sort of humor is par for the course in that particular work environment. I mean obviously that would get you in trouble in like a corporate office job, but you know that. You also know that relying on misogynistic humor is not the super mega coolest thing in the world, but you're just fitting in with a culture that's already there, and if any of the people there were likely to be meaningfully hurt as a result of that kind of humor, it would most likely be you yourself. So as long as that read is right, that that's just the kind of gruff humor your workplace has, I think you're just fine. Edit, miss the word not in a sentence lol. Am I the butthole for shutting down Phil's armchair physics? I, 30 female, have a PhD in physics. Obviously, I've taken a ton of math slash physics classes over the years to be able to conduct research properly. My Phil, 60 male, recently retired from his job in sales. Since then he has taken up studying physics. This does not mean that he went back to college and took physics slash math classes, he took a semester of calculus in college like 40 years ago for his business major. Instead, he gets high and watches YouTube videos. For a while it was fun when he asked me to explain what we know about dark matter to him and I draw out galaxy rotation curves, but about two years ago he started claiming he's figured out how to unify quantum mechanics and general relativity. This is a huge unsolved problem in physics and would surely be worthy of a Nobel Prize. I tried to shut him down and encouraged him to study more math, but he was pretty adamant that he didn't need to know math and his outsider perspective was actually a huge advantage. I was annoyed. Eventually my mill and husband told him to stop bothering me. I thought that was it, but my sill, 32 female, recently brought home a new boyfriend, 38 male, over Thanksgiving. This boyfriend has no schooling past high school, no hate, just want to make it clear. He does not study math slash physics on the side either. He loves getting high with my Phil and listening to his physics theories, fancies himself a bit of a physicist himself, and they bounce ideas off each other. I always make myself scarce when I notice this happening. Eventually, Sill's boyfriend noticed and called me out one night as I was leaving. I tried to brush it off as oh I've turned my brain off for the night haha but then Sill's boyfriend said that with my PhD, I could really help them by fine-tuning their theories and get them published. I said no. Phil said he's really figured it out, he thinks he can get a book deal, and I should really listen to his theories. I said no, and reminded him that he should study more math. Sister's boyfriend then called me a snob who went to a fancy school and accused me of jealousy. So I finally said that I might be a snob, 
but they're just two armchair physicists who probably know as much calculus as my cat. Then I told Phil I'd listen to his theory if he could tell me what a metric is, big concept in differential geometry, the branch of math you need to know to understand general relativity. Then I told Sil's boyfriend I'd give him an even easier question and asked him what an integral was. Dead silence from both, so I left. We flew out the next day. Honestly I thought this was all behind us but husband and I are flying out to Mill and Phil's tomorrow, Sil and her boyfriend are coming too, but yesterday Sil called me and said her boyfriend is waiting for an apology from me, and so is Phil. I told her to put her boyfriend on the phone. Then I asked him if he knew what an integral was yet. He still didn't so I laughed and hung up. Sil then texted me that I was going to ruin Christmas. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. Instead, he gets high and watches YouTube videos. Wait, underscore hold on underscore does this not count towards the 10k hours that make you an expert in a field? Because I've been smoking my way through the trippiest not theory playlist and just assumed my degree would be on its way in the mail. I tried to shut him down and encouraged him to study more math, but he was pretty adamant that he didn't need to know math and his outsider perspective was actually a huge advantage. PSSH, the math establishment just wants you using their existing, dumb numbers and stuff. Threve is perfectly valid. Then I told Phil I'd listen to his theory if he could tell me what a metric is. Dead silence. Maybe the question was making him tenser. Not the butthole. I'm sure they don't mean any harm, but they're acting entitled to your labor, and also it's frankly insulting that they think they can know more, or even an equal amount, about physics than you off of just YouTube videos. It all feels like it is undertones of misogyny if you ask me. If you were a cis man with a PhD in physics would they be doing all of this and demanding things of you? Probably not. The way you handled the phone call with your Sills boyfriend probably will stir some things up and make it weird at Christmas, but you weren't wrong for it, you just might want to do some damage control to make the holiday more enjoyable, for your own sake, not because you owe it to them. Definitely not the butthole though, and if you're not feeling like doing damage control then more power to you. Am I the butthole for ducking when my sister's friend used me as an armrest, causing her to fall? I'm a teenage girl. My sister's friend is one year older than me. We'll call her Stacy, because that's her name. I'm short. I know I'm short. I look 10. Stacy is always teasing me about being short. She's nicknamed me Frodo. Once she used my head as an armrest and I told her to never do that again. I don't think being short is even that bad. An economy plane seat is comfortably roomy for me. It's an advantage in the sport I play. Kids' shoes are way cheaper than adults. But anyway. Stacy was over yesterday. She used me as an armrest again. I ducked away. She lost her balance and fell. She wasn't hurt, but was embarrassed. She is angry at me for being unable to take a joke and is refusing to enter our house until I apologize, which I think is great. But my sister thinks it's terrible. My mom thinks I should have been the bigger person and told Stacy to get off instead of ducking. My dad thinks it's funny and Stacy got what she deserved. My sister wants me to apologize, and says I'm deaf the butthole, but our brother says I'm not the butthole, Stacy is a jerk. She armrests him too, so I don't know. If I'm the butthole then I'll probably call Stacy and apologize. If not the butthole then I guess Stacy won't come over again lol. Not the butthole. Stacy threatening not to come over anymore is a win. My mom thinks I should have been the bigger person and told Stacy to get off instead of ducking. How you resisted replying to your mom with something like mom, it is literally impossible for me to be the bigger person, so I will just stick to sticking up for myself instead is beyond me. Your dad is right, not the butthole. You stood up to a bully. Not the butthole, your dad is right, she deserved it. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Not the butthole and since not apologizing also gets rid of the butthole infestation in your home, stick to it. Am I the butthole for telling my ex-husband that his wife's feelings are not mine or our kid's problem? My ex-husband and I share three children. Our oldest is 15, our middle is 14 and our youngest is 13. We had them very close together and then our marriage crashed and burned. We were young, unsuited to be together and we both came from very restrictive households which pushed us together out of a sense of clawing for freedom. I dated some after our marriage ended and realized I liked being single. He remarried a little over a year after our divorce. His wife is Ani. Ani and I have a complicated dynamic. She adores my kids. But was very jealous in those early days of her marriage to my ex because I had primary custody and he had every other weekend, due to the nature of his job. I did not feel like Ani taking time while he wasn't around was a good compromise to him obtaining 50 to 50 and a judge agreed, stating since dad would not see the kids during that time, it made sense to keep them with mom, me. Two of my three kids were not super affectionate in general, but were with me and more than once she made comments about rubbing it in her face or using my kids to hurt her, because the kids would not be the same with her. 
For three or so years we had a very tense dynamic and my ex was useless. I told him he should be doing better as my co-parent but he told me his wife was more of the co-parent now. He eventually left the old job and 50 to 50 began happening. Once 50 to 50 happened we had some more issues, mostly because she started calling herself their mom and I hated that. My kids have only ever called her Ani and I know they used to say she wasn't their mom. But I admit I was jealous. I also believe that's what she wanted to have happened. I did get it under control because my kids came first. But it was always annoying when she had already gone out of her way to introduce herself to someone as their mom and then there was confusion because they called me mom. Things sort of calmed over the last three years. We're not close. We're not all one big family. But my kids are safe and looked after and that's what matters to me. I also had them in therapy from a very young age so that helped them a lot. Ani recently learned that she will not be able to have a biological child of her own. She and my ex were trying for years and she suffered three miscarriages in that time. I'm not sure of all the details but I do know this was a blow. They found out the final results of testing last week. My ex told me that he wants the kids to spend more time with them and to be with them for Christmas, I get this year per our CO. He admitted the kids do not want to be there but wanted me to agree anyway, because Annie's feelings and helping her. I told him no. He told me again about Annie's feelings and I told him her feelings were not mine or our kids problem. He called me a string of names and told me Annie's feelings do matter to them because she is their parent, she is their family, and they should have more compassion and empathy for her. Am I the butthole? Not the butthole. It's like you said, you and your kids are not responsible for Annie's feelings. And when the kids don't want to be there you are being a good mom by respecting their wishes. Not the butthole. If your kids don't want to be there don't force them, it's not their job, or yours, to make her happy. Am I the butthole for adopting my dad's dog when he died, even though my wife didn't want me to? My dad died of heart failure about two years ago. His long-term domestic partner called to tell me he was on the way to the hospital but was certainly deceased. Her health was poor and she died the same day, which I didn't learn until much later when she was unreachable. I couldn't get into the house and had to force the door. The dog was obviously orphaned. A cockapoo, small, easy, mild, nine years old, no problems. I took the liberty of bringing her home. My wife was a little shy of furious but very very angry. She said I should have asked her, that it's my house too. I wouldn't contradict that, but under the circumstances I was certain that she would understand. I was very hurt by her insensitivity. Obviously I was somewhat stunned by grief and I couldn't imagine anything other than adopting the dog myself. We own our home and already have two cats. As I said, she's a low maintenance dog. My wife persists to refuse to walk the dog saying she's not my dog. Occasionally she uses this incident to demonstrate how I'm a bully in the relationship. I have a hard time seeing it objectively. I'm over the grief and I just want some thoughts, so let me know. Clarification, it's not really about expecting my wife to do dog chores. I just wanted to have an example of the strange dynamic. Like in two years she has never walked the dog. Not once. I have been bold enough to suggest it on occasion, such as when we had evening plans and she was already home but I was going to need to come home versus meeting up, or if I wasn't feeling great. I've been surprised when she holds that boundary. I'm guessing she would walk her if I was incapacitated, she'd be pissed though. She doesn't actually despise the dog. She chooses to give her treats and things. It's not really about me expecting my wife to take care of the dog. Truly, still feel I had no excuse not to take the dog. It was a duty I welcomed. My wife didn't want it, but that wasn't a suitable reason to defy my conscience. I'm majority you're the butthole so far. I'm certainly not impartial. So be it. I wanted the dog then also I couldn't imagine being the son who send the dog to strangers or the humane society. Most of the comments have been kind enough. Thanks. Everybody sucks here should you have talked to wife? Yes but grief. Should she be behaving like this when you just lost your dad? Absolutely not. How insensitive and cruel. I miss that this is two years later. No, you can't expect your wife to care for a dog she never wanted. In the beginning while you were grieving occasionally, yes. Beyond that? No. To come around to? No you can't expect her to suddenly want an animal she never wanted. Wife doesn't sound like a dog person and you're an off for forcing them around each other. It is your dog and your responsibility to take care of. Not the butthole. In my opinion my dad and his partner both dropped dead suddenly and orphaned a dog is one of the very few acceptable reasons for bringing a dog home without discussing it first. Am I the butthole for sleeping in my daughter's room after my husband told her she couldn't have me at night and telling him off? Our daughter is 5 and she's been having trouble sleeping recently due to nightmares and is moving. She asked her dad if she could have me at night and he said no. She tried to negotiate with him and asked for one night and told him she was scared but he told her she couldn't as I needed to sleep with him at night. Even though she was crying he didn't back down. When I asked her what was wrong, 
She told me he said I couldn't sleep with her even though she was scared which annoyed me as it isn't his decision and he knows how difficult it's been for her the past week. I told her I would sleep with her for one night which my husband didn't like. I told him off for saying no to her afterwards and he's been annoyed at me for sleeping in her room for that one night after he told her no as he thinks I undermined him. Am I the butthole? I'm concerned that she had to ask him if you could sleep in her room. Is there a reason why she needs to ask his permission? Why couldn't she ask you if you could slash wanted to sleep in her room? Not the butthole. Your husband is a massive ah. Is he always this controlling? Your child is scared FFS. Your husband is acting like more of a child than your five-year-old. Am I the butthole for not sympathizing more with my sister's situation since she created it? I do sympathize with my sister. I love her very much. But she has made some very poor, in my opinion, decisions. I, 33 female, am six years older than my sister. She is a brilliant and talented musician. I cannot praise her skill enough. Truthfully I am somewhat jealous of it. I didn't get that. There are four kids in my family. My two older brothers, myself and my sister. My brothers are much older than us. They love us but they are more like young uncles to us. The younger one was in university when my sister was born. My parents had money set aside for us that our grandparents had saved for us. Our parents invested the money and contributed to it. They weren't horrible people so they didn't take it for themselves or hold it over us to control us. When we graduated from high school we were told that there was money for us. We could use it for school or to invest or whatever. It was ours. The only stipulation was that we would get it in yearly installments for six years. I guess that way we would not blow it all on coke and hookers and had a chance to grow up before it was lol gone. I got some financial assistance for my education so I actually managed to save almost half of mine. Enough for a sizable down payment on a house when I was 24. That was the year my sister graduated. She decided to go see the world. She traveled through Europe and Australia. She went snowboarding in New Zealand and Argentina. I told her that she should save some for school. She said that she was making money busking and that she was okay. Then COVID happened. I thought maybe she would come home and study while the world was shut down. Nope. She stayed in Indonesia because it was cheap to live there. Well now she is home. She is down to her last installment. My parents signed over the account to her with all the money that was left. It's enough to get her back to Indonesia. But now she is looking at the account and realizing that she is at the end. There is no more coming. She asked me out for coffee and was crying because she might have to use the money to pay for an apartment and then figure out what to do. She wants to go to teach English as a second language in Asia. And while you can do that with certification you won't get paid very much. You need a proper degree for some of the well-paying positions. I did not say I told you so but she could guess what I was thinking. She says I'm in butthole for judging her choices and not supporting her lifestyle. I wish I had traveled more when I was younger. But I got an education instead. So did our brothers. She chose to use her money that way. I feel bad for her but I did kind of tell her it wasn't a great choice. Not the butthole she made her choices and now has to deal with the results. Not your problem. Not the butthole. By supporting you, what she really meant was give her more money so she can continue to pretend to live a life that she can't actually afford. Duh. She knew what she was doing. I did not say I told you so but she could guess what I was thinking. She says I'm in butthole for judging her choices and not supporting her lifestyle. Info, well, what did you say? How did she guess you were thinking I told you so if you merely made sympathetic noises? Or do you think she expected you to give her money? Am I the butthole for making my parents choose between me and my ex slash former friend? I was best friends with Jen from preschool through ninth grade. Her home life was was pretty rough and she practically lived at my house. My parents called her the daughter they never had. When we were in ninth grade, I asked her out. It took some convincing but she eventually said yes. She broke up with me over text the day after our date. She barely went to school, didn't text, and wasn't at my house at all the next few weeks. She eventually showed up at my house in the middle of the night. My parents took her in no questions asked then she left in the middle of the night a few weeks later. I admit I didn't love having her around and didn't make it easy on her but her leaving was hard on everybody. My parents had to go to therapy. Last year I moved out for college but I was still planning on coming to visit. A few months after I moved out, Jen showed up at my parents' house pregnant and with a baby. They took her in again then called me and my brothers asking how we feel about her staying with them. My brothers were okay with it but I can't forgive her for what she did a few years ago. My parents let her stay anyways but said they had conditions on her staying with them like her going to therapy and either enrolling in college or getting a job. I told them I still wasn't okay with it. We argued a bit and I told them I wouldn't visit if she was living there. She's still there and I held true to my word and I haven't visited since. They're trying to get me to come for Christmas but I won't be there if Jen is living there.
They're calling me petty and saying I need to forgive her but I think I have a right to be upset. So, at 15 you were told no and then after bullying her, which you refer to as it took some convincing, she eventually said yes. You had one single date, which you harassed her into agreeing to. Then you refer to her not wanting a second date, she also didn't want a first date, either, BTW, as breaking up with you. She then spent weeks avoiding you, which you still didn't pick up on. You don't say how old you are now, but it's clear you still resent her for not wanting to date you. You're the butthole. Um, yes, you're the butthole. You can't forgive her for what? Not wanting to date you? No one ever needs to apologize for not wanting to date someone. And you only went on one date, after some convincing? She doesn't owe you anything. Your parents are trying to help her get her life turned around and you're snubbing her because of a bruised ego. Time to let this go and be a bigger person. Am I the butthole for not making my children be quiet while my wife had a headache? Been with my wife for two years, I have two children from a previous relationship who are five and eight. Currently seven months pregnant, been married and living together for five months, it's been an adaption for everyone, mostly the children. During our relationship even before living together I knew my wife got the occasional headache, she takes painkillers but says they don't help so she'll usually spend the day in our bedroom and sleep. Kids are at home and wife has a headache, I'm working from home. Kids are doing what they normally do, playing. Wife texts me asking to keep them from making so much noise, I was in a meeting when she texted so I didn't actually look at it till an hour later. She's upset but the way I see it is it's the children's home? They're playing, what am I meant to say my wife has a headache go read a book. I don't think I'm the butthole, wife does. Figured I'd ask here. Am I the butthole? My wife has a headache go read a book? Yes, that's exactly what you should say. My daughter is three, and when I have a headache I say to her, honey, would you please quiet down, I have a headache. And then she calms down. So your kids should be able to do this too. You're the butthole. You're the butthole. Not seeing the text for an hour is acceptable. Refusing to teach your kids empathy makes you an awe. You could have easily tell your kids that their stepmom has a headache and that noise is really bothering her. Could they do something more quite? You shouldn't be angry at them if they fail, but you should slowly teach them to be aware of others and respect their needs. Within reason. Am I the butthole for telling my brother's new fiancé she isn't my kid's aunt? I, 31 male, and my wife, 30 female, and I have two kids, 5 male, the other, 2 female. I also have two siblings, an older brother, 35 male, and a younger, 29 male. Me and my older brother both have kids. My younger has none, and has bounced from fling to fling. However in 2020 before the pandemic hit he met this girl, 23 female. We'll call her Amber. Fake name. From day one he was obsessed with her. They started dating and when we thought we'd only meet her once then never again, she stayed coming round. We were all happy to see my brother get serious about someone, even if they were a bit younger than him. However as Amber started spending more time around our family, Collectively we all noticed certain things she did we didn't like. For just a couple of examples. She would move something in whoever's house we were in, and say this looks better like this, so I moved it for you. Or she would get into people's stuff and say we're family now so we can share. Such as when she used my sill lotions and makeup without asking. But this was the thing that made us all dislike her. She would constantly talk proudly about how she turned my quote spineless frick boy baby brother into a man. Okay, unnecessary but he was a player before so I get the joke. But then she added I'll do what your mom couldn't and teach him to be a gentleman. And yes. She really has said that on more than one occasion. We've all mentioned these things to my brother but he brushes it off or says I love her dude what can I do? And Vailp. He proposed to her at the beginning of 2022. And no she hasn't changed her antics since 2020. Anyway. Amber came over with my brother for my wife's birthday party. Of course my kids were there too. Amber. I'm front of a house full of mine and my wife's family she says oh it's my favorite niece and nephew. Before picking up my daughter. She added am I your favorite auntie? In a baby voice, as if she was saying it to my daughter. I walked over and took my daughter out of her hands and said in a calm but stern tone you're not their aunt. So please don't refer to yourself as their aunt. She seemed taken back and immediately got defensive saying I'm marrying your brother so I will be their aunt by marriage. I just shrugged and calmly responded that I didn't care if they got married. She could be Mrs. Amber or Amber but she was not their aunt. A few people heard and pretended not to, but Amber was upset and left and my brother came in asking what happened. After I told him he said I was an ass and took off after Amber. My brother called me that night saying I needed to apologize and take back what I said, but I refused to. My kids hardly know slash spend time with her, and she's not very well liked amongst our family. So am I the butthole? You're the butthole. 
You can dislike her and keep her away from your kids all you want, but she will in fact be their aunt. Everybody sucks here, I think you all suck. The way you handle it was inappropriate. She will be your family by marriage, therefore she will be their aunt by marriage. Also Amber sucks she needs to know what her place is. The statement she made about your mother and brother is a big no-go. But you talk to your brother not to Amber. I'm not saying it would have changed anything, but perhaps it would have. Not the butthole you don't have to consider her family sometimes even blood doesn't mean much it's really your call. Am I the butthole for not leaving an equal share of inheritance to my stepchildren as my biological child in my will? I, 55 male, married my wife, 52 female, two decades ago, bringing with her two children from her previous marriage, 27 F, 30 M. We also have a child of our own, 19 female. I am the primary breadwinner, my wife has always been psalm to raise all three children, and since they have left, continues to run the house, and I am more than happy with this arrangement. Most of our joint assets therefore came from my income, wife came to the marriage with no assets. We are aware that wife's ex-husband has had a windfall of inheritance money, as conveyed by my stepchildren. This means that my stepchildren are set to inherit that windfall if not squandered. Their paternal grandmother and other family members are still in the picture with possible inheritance that may yet be passed down. Conversely my biological daughter would not benefit from that inheritance money, and would only benefit from whatever inheritance I can give her, no other relatives in the picture that could support her or leave additional inheritance money. I have therefore chosen, with support from my wife, to will a larger portion of inheritance to my biological daughter. For example, if my wife and I died in an accident tomorrow, we would be leaving about $900,000 in assets to, female, 19 and $25,000 each to, female, 27 and, male, 30, female, 19 would have no family support thus relying entirely on the inheritance money, whereas, female, 27 and, male, 30 will still have other family members that can support them. If ex-husband died tomorrow, female, 27 and, male, 30 are likely to receive $250,000 each in assets, if not more, and will still have us to help support them when needed, as we currently do. When we discuss this with, female, 27 and, male, 30 emphasizing that they are set to receive inheritance from ex-husband, and potentially others on his side of the family. They determined this was unfair, that my assets should be split evenly between, female, 19, female, 27 and, male, 30 I retorted that if their father died, would, female, 19 get any of that inheritance, and they said no, because he is not her father. To be fair, they do look up to me, and consider me as a father figure, even though I am not their father. Therefore I am wondering if I am the butthole? Not the butthole. But I see no reason why you ever should have discussed it with the three kids in the first place. You and your wife are in agreement, why ask the kids for their opinion, especially since you're only in your fifties. You are likely going to get crap on here, but I'm going to say not the butthole. This sub seems to think step-parents have to be perfect and there is no differences ever. First off, I personally am fine with step-kids getting less of an inheritance. I say this as someone who grew up in a blended family. Throw in the face that their father has a totally separate inheritance for them and they'll have more anyway, I'd say your step-kids are just greedy. Not the butthole very telling that they said no sharing their inheritance because their father is not her father. How is that different from them and you? They are being greedy OP. You can tell because they think it's unfair when you do the exact same thing to them that they want to do to her. Not the butthole as long as you base your argument on their windfall from their biological family and not on the fact that your wife was a saw wife. Presumably, she did domestic work that often goes uncompensated and would have cost you a lot more if you needed to replace her sacrifice with a housekeeper, babysitter, and cook. Am I the butthole for telling my 7-year-old cousin that I'm gay at the Christmas party? Male, 19 and super gay. I've been out publicly for four years now but tbhh it wasn't hard for anyone to tell before that. My family has all been chill about it and I never had any issues dealing with homophobia. Almost no issues. My mom's brother and his wife give me the that's nice while trying so so hard to force a smile whenever it's brought up. It's not so much my uncle as it is my aunt. She's super Catholic. And super Irish. That's about all the details I'll give here. We do Christmas with my mom's side the weekend before and I was sitting next to their 7 year old daughter. My other cousin was there with his girlfriend. He's my age. Little cousin says in her adorable seven-year-old voice to me why don't you have a jilfween like my brother and honestly without really thinking anything of it I said I won't ever have a girlfriend, I like boys. I'm gay cue the hardcore stare from my aunt while my uncle tried to tell a story to distract her. It didn't start a big fight then and there but today I heard all about how my aunt called my mom and really gave it to her. I had zero right to tell their daughter what gay was. They're the parents and they will decide when she can know about it. Etc. After my mom told me all this I questioned why they need to be secretive about it. 
I asked if they think it's shameful. Mom assured me no but they claim as parents it's up to us to teach our child about that. My uncle has since called me basically begging for his sake to call my aunt and apologize, and to get this try to walk back the comment next time I see her. Hess giving me the you know how she is, just apologize so she can stop annoying me about it so reddit am I the butthole for doing this? Also frick apologizing that's not happening lol. Not the butthole. You just said I like boys and not girls. Nothing complicated or inappropriate about that. I'm calling homophobia on the ant. Not the butthole. It's homophobic to think that gayness is an inherently mature or adult topic. If the kid knows boys sometimes have girlfriends, it's very reasonable for them to know that some boys have boyfriends instead. I like boys is a very age-appropriate way of saying you're gay. If the kid had followed up with how does that work? And you'd gone into sex details, it would have been as inappropriate as giving her the birds and the bees about straight sex, but you didn't. I'm sorry that she can't understand. Your aunt and uncle are homophobic. Not the butthole. You be your glorious self. I'd actually ask them to apologize to you, for implying that who are is something that should be hidden and ashamed of. Am I the butthole for causing my friend to elope? I 32 female, have cervical myelopathy from a snowboarding injury. I need surgery from it but due to the healthcare system I've been waiting for years and it's been getting worse. One of my best friend was supposed to be married in 2020 but due to the pandemic she had to push it to October 2022. So at that point I was still able to walk and she wanted to have it at a national park. The walk is about 2 kilometers uphill to a waterfall and lake the walk has roots so I can't ride a wheelchair there. So it's been over 2 years and I tell her a few months ago I probably can't make the walk. We brainstorm some other solutions but in the end it doesn't look like there isn't an easy way for me to attend. There was a guy friend coming that could help carry me but he moved countries and decided not to. She apologized but said it was her dream to get married at that waterfall and I said I understood but was definitely not happy about it since we had been friends for years and I expected to attend. I did say to a mutual friend I wasn't happy with her choice of wedding venue and I wish she valued me enough to change it so I can go. I know when she made the plans I confirmed I could go but I think she should be able to change plans since time has passed. That friend I was offloading to offloaded to the bridesmaids and people took sides. Some contacted the bride and told her to change the venue because they felt like I should be allowed to attend and others said it was planned for and I shouldn't expect it to change for me. I didn't realize how bad it got until the bride came back and accused me of trying to ruin her wedding. I said I just told a friend what I thought and I didn't go any further and she called me selfish and told me it was her wedding and the pandemic wasn't her fault so she couldn't control that in that time I'd gotten worse. I told her she can't but if she had any compassion for me she's changed it to somewhere I can go to and she hung up on me. She then cancelled the wedding completely but I heard she basically eloped and got married to her fiancé with only half the bridesmaids and her parents present. The ones who defended me and argued with her said she cut them out of the wedding and have stopped talking to them. I feel really had now because I didn't actually want to go to the wedding badly enough to lose her as a friend but I didn't think she would cut us all off as a result. I don't know if I should contact her or what to say or if I'm even in the wrong in this. You're the butthole. You didn't want to go badly enough to lose her as a friend, but just enough for her to change her dream venue for you. It was her wedding. You're the butthole. You managed to make a good, long-term friend's wedding plans all about you. It's incredibly selfish to think that after she had to postpone her wedding for two years she should also have to give up her dream venue to accommodate someone who should have been supportive and excited for her. You could have been FaceTimed in if you wanted to watch her vows that badly or just waited for the pictures to come out like everyone else who isn't able to attend a wedding. Her friend that moved out of country didn't ask her to change plans when he couldn't go and you shouldn't have either. People miss weddings they really want to go to for financial, health, and logistical reasons all the time. Instead of gossiping you should have been sending a congratulatory card with some cash. You and everyone else who didn't pick the bride's side are all the ah. You're the butthole, your accident is tragic but it was an ah move to guilt your friends and spread gossip. Their wedding isn't about you, it's about them. You may have lost a friend over an event. You're the butthole, so because you couldn't go to the wedding you had a petty party instead, causing drama where none was needed, and making what is usually a stressful time for any bride that much more painful. So much so that they felt the need to cancel their wedding and elope. The wedding was never about you. Way to make it all about you OP.